Hello everybody. So today we're going to be looking at transformations and domain and range of exponential functions. So starting off with transformations, these are roughly the same transformations you're used to seeing for all our other types of functions. Um, you have your a value, so multiplied in front of the function, will give you vertical reflection, vertical stretch, or vertical compression. So remember this is if a is a negative number. Vertical stretch is if a is greater than 1. And vertical compression is a is between 0 and 1. Um, in fact, I'm going to put absolute value there. Because if you have, say, a negative 4 for your a value, that's both a reflection and a stretch. So Now, b is not a transformation per se. It's the base of your exponent. So in this class, we are mainly using base 2 base 10 or base e, which we'll talk about later. e is a special number, kind of like pi. It has um, a, a never-ending decimal representation, um, and it's used in finance mostly, interest, when you're talking about interest rates. So then you've got your, your h, which is your left and right translation. And you've got your plus k, which is your up and down translation. Now, exponential functions, as we've talked about a little bit, also have horizontal asymptotes. So they're not like rationals where you have both. So you're not going to see a vertical asymptote on an exponential function. You're just going to see a horizontal one. So if I have, a, if I have an exponential decay like this, for instance, it, it's going to approach this horizontal asymptote and not go below it or touch it. Um, and notice that it's a horizontal line, so it's a y equals line, but it is related to the up and down movement of the graph. So the horizontal asymptote is at k, y equals k, and this affects the, and since this is a y value, it affects the range of the function. Um, so when you are looking at the range on the next page here on our examples, you are going to be looking at your k value, um, and your domain is just going to be all real numbers in this case. Ooh, let's open it up. Let's try some things. So we're going to do some domain and range first. Um, and I've got it written several ways here because I found when I made this note sheet in the past, students needed some practice with the different notations um, for domain and range. So we're going to kind of do that here as well. So I'm going to start with my parent function, 2 to the x power, which I have right here on my calculator. So as you can see, we've got a horizontal asymptote at y equals 0. It's right on the x-axis. And my graph exists above it. So I have, y val I have positive y values, but no negative y values. And as far as left and right for my domain, I can put any x value up there I want. I can take 2 to any power I want to. So my domain is going to be all real numbers because there are no restrictions on what x value I can have. So my domain in Word is going to be all real numbers. We can get a little lazy numbers. And my range is going to be, um, let's say, all positive numbers. So everything above zero. And in equality notation, which some of you prefer, you can still put all real numbers there. Um, or more properly, x is an element of the real numbers. And for the range, you want to put y is greater than 0. So we're, remember, we're not including 0 because that's where your horizontal asymptote is. So y is greater than 0. Um, interval notation is this fun one where we have negative infinity to infinity for domain. So all, again, this is the same thing as all real numbers. It means the same. And for the range, I can go from 0 to infinity, not including 0. And we never, we never bracket infinity because infinity is not actually a real number. It's just um, it's a different type of number. Um, it just in, in our case, it just means keep going forever. So don't ever bracket infinity. So let's try the next one, which I have graphed right here. 
So I've got um, another exponential growth function. I've got some transformations. I've got a vertical stretch. I've got left three and I've got down one. So our horizontal asymptote is going to be at negative one. And since I don't, I don't have a vertical reflection here, so my graph is going up from negative one. All my y values are going to be bigger than negative one. So for my range, I'm going to put, um, let's put like all y greater than negative one, like that. And if you want to word it a little bit differently, that's totally fine. Let me make this easier to read. How about that? Because that is super ugly there. My domain is still all real numbers. Because still, I can put I can put any number into this exponent I want. There's no restrictions. There's not like an x value that I can put here that will give me um, undefined or anything like that. So it's always going to give me a y value of some sort. So then all real numbers, so x can be any real number. x is an element of the real numbers. For our inequality notation, I am going y is greater than negative 1 this time. And for interval, again, I've got the same domain, negative infinity to infinity. And then my range, I can go from negative 1 to positive infinity with my y values. So let's try one that has a vertical reflection to it so we can see what the difference would be. So take a look at the next one. We've got a vertical reflection there, so it's going to be upside down. So in this case, I've got, so I'm back to having a horizontal asymptote at zero because I don't have, my k value is essentially zero. Um, unlike this one where I was subtracting one um, here, I do have a right translation, but no up and down translation. So my horizontal asymptote's at zero, but notice my graph is entirely below zero now. It's not above anymore. So when I do my range, I want to say all y less than zero. Again, not including zero. My domain is still all real numbers for the same reason as before. There's no x I could possibly put here that would get me an undefined y value. So any x value will work. x is an element of the real numbers. So now, so since my y's are less this time, I want to put y is less than 0. And in interval notation, I still have negative infinity to positive infinity. This time, since I'm, I'm going below 0, my maximum is 0, not included, so with, just with a round parentheses. And I can go as low as I want. So my y values will keep going down. That's weird looking. So I want to say negative infinity to zero for my range. So let's look at some transformations and horizontal asymptotes for each exponential function. So you can graph these to take a look at them, um, or you can use this kind of little cheat sheet here. But these, these are the same transformations that we've had on our other functions. So in this case, actually, I'm going to go ahead and graph it so that I can talk about it with you. Because this is a question I get all the time. Um, what's really my parent function here? Well, you have to take whatever base it is and then to the x power. So in this case, my parent function is true to the power of x. So that's my parent function right here. And then I'm comparing it, so I'm going to put tab and 3 times 2 to the power of x plus 3 minus 1. All right, so starting with blue, going to red. So it's a little hard to tell from the graph itself that there is actually a vertical stretch here. This red one is a little bit steeper than the blue one is. Um, so I'm going to put... Vertical stretch, and it's times 3. Now you've also moved to the left. How many spaces to the left? 
Well, it's a little hard to tell from the graph, to be honest with you. So take a look at your equation. And I know my left right is always going to be with the x. And it's x plus 3. So I know I have moved left 3. And then finally, I've obviously moved downward compared to the blue one. Um, and you can actually kind of follow the horizontal asymptote. Okay, it's not too bad. Looks like it's at negative 1, and that's confirmed by this minus 1 right here. So I've moved down 1. So I'm going to ask you about another one of these, and then we will look at some more examples of both of these things in class together.